Okay, so I'm going to start putting the cluster together. I thought I'd uh, just document a bit here. Uh, first step is to configure the memory in all four machines to be the same, or three at the moment, sorry. So um, we're popping uh, 16 gig of RAM out of each uh, memory board. So we'll just gently take out two sticks out of each board. A little bit difficult to do while you're holding your camera, but hey, it will live. Once we're done doing that, that board's ready to go back into its socket. And then you lock down the little levers, and that's it. So, rinse and repeat with the remaining memory boards. <coughs> and this machine will have 64 gigabytes of RAM. Um, this machine already has its scalability key installed. I'll show you a little bit about that in a minute. And, yeah, I'll finish doing this RAM. And then we'll get this cover back on, get the other machine, get the scalability cables, and we will continue. So, back in a minute. So, there we go, that's Spaceball 1. Hardware is configured, ready to go. Got the four CPUs, all the memory boards are installed, the scalability key is installed, and we continue and we repeat with the next machine. And this is uh, Spaceball 2, it's already configured with RAM. I have to install the scalability key. It allows it to access the scalability options in the RSA2 controller. And to install that, it's very simple. Just line it up in its little slot, push it home, and that's it. That's done. So there's Spaceball 2. Once again, 64 gig of RAM, 4 quad core processors. And uh, now it's time to uh, do all the firmware updates, get the cables out, and then plug them in and, and uh, link them up. Okay, so we've got the uh, firmware, FPGA, PCI, baseboard adapter, all of er everything's updated on Spaceball 1, Spaceball 2 is already done. I may have to double check that they're all the same, but I'm pretty sure I've already done that one the same already. So now it comes down to, oh yeah, I've got the scalability cables plugged in. They are installed, they're the thick cables there. I will show you guys the actual cables sometime. They are very, very fancy looking cable. Um, and now I'm configuring the partition in the RSA2 adapter settings here. Now I think I just need to create the partition. Please select at least two systems. So, partition in valid mode, standalone, standalone, auto configure, primary checkbox for the primary system, auto. Right, multi node, valid multi node, valid multi node. Well, that is getting somewhere, isn't it? Alrighty, so I will save this setting. No, I don't need to save it, I think it's already done. And I uh, suppose I'll power up the primary and then power up the secondary, and hopefully um, everything goes to plan. So let's see. Well, I pressed the power button on that machine, and that machine fired up as well at the same time. So if you ask me, that's a good sign. That, that tells me that they are actually linked. We do actually have uh, power supply warnings on at the moment, because I've only got one power cable each. Not to worry, the power supplies are 1440 watts each. Um, they can handle it. Uh, you only need two for redundancy purposes. So let's see what happens here. The way things are going, I may actually get the third system online tonight. It's all been going quite quick and easy. I'll just wait for everybody to uh, sync up, I guess. A little bit of patience is required when doing these, I've noticed. They do take some time to boot. It's not an instant process by any means, and um, yeah, I'm a little bit excited. So, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 
hopefully all the uh, bar settings and everything are correct already, I'm pretty sure they are. I'm hoping that it wouldn't actually let you link them unless they were actually ready to link, which you never know. You never know. I'm guessing this machine's going to sit and wait for the main machine. It's still flipping through code pages, but so it's still probably booting. This one's just going through its PCI startup. I can't see what that one's doing because there's no monitor plugged into it, of course. Waiting for primary server. I thought you were the primary server. BIOS version is older than this primary server BIOS version. Okay. That means I haven't done something right yet. Damn it. Alright. Have to check that out. Well, looks like I've had success, people. I'm actually quite um, elated, I'd say would be the word. Um, I up well, I made sure they both had the same BIOS version for a start. I did have to actually end up downgrading one of the machines instead of upgrading the other, but I don't think that's an issue. And uh, we now have 128GB of RAM, 8 processors, which are each quad cores, as I told you before. So that gives us a total of 32 cores, all running on one OS. And uh, we're running Boink already again, started crunching already again. So we'll bring up the Boink Manager. I'm actually surprised, uh, Debian seems to be handling it without any issues. I expected it to shit its pants, but it, it didn't. I'm actually pretty shocked that it didn't shit its pants. I expected to be uh, stuck having to use Windows Server, but um, apparently not. So now we have 32 cores all crunching and uh, CPU usage is 100% across the board. So I suppose the only thing left now is to uh, get the third machine out here and repeat the process and then I will um, show you guys the results. So that, that's all I'm going to do for tonight. There was a couple of fuck ups along the way that didn't make it into video of course. Um, one of them being the bias which you saw. Um, and uh, we'll leave it at that for the moment, but so far very pleased. Just need to get the third machine up and uh, we'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching.